Hello on the Rockers. On this episode, we kick off Pride Month with a little, I mean a lot of music. In studio, we have my favorite Canadian export besides maple syrup. We have the group Reverse is here. And we have dance diva icon herself, Pepper Mache, performing her new music live. And me, your favorite host with a sassy most. Raise a glass and let the drinks begin. It's on the rocks. <laughs> And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, where I drink with your favorite celebrities as we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, well, that's about it. So pop a cork, lean back, and raise a glass to On the Rocks. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. Well, happy Pride, everybody. Buttons and bows and pantyhose on the Rocks podcast, the place where we're too glam to give a damn. Uh, happy Pride, because we've definitely earned it this year. Like us on Twitter and Instagram, at On the Rocks on air and on Facebook, oh. On the Rocks Radio Show. Send me an email. Book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I will show up. <laughs> Info at on the Rocks Radio Show com. You can watch and or listen to our now our... Close, so close to 300 episodes um, at ontherocksradioshow.com or Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV on the Outa.tv app, Facebook Watch, streaming with pride on SVTV Network, and on Channel 31 on the East Coast. You lucky East Coast. I think we're on there like four times a week. They're watching the same show over and over again. I was like, uh, the, show, the show's brought to you by Fandaddies.com, bringing you the sassiest and classiest clacking fans and hats for prides, EDM parties, sassy selfies, and even sci-fi nerds. Uh, head to Fandaddies.com, support your small businesses. Word of warning, tonight's shenanigans are brought to you by the vodka tastings of Neft Vodka. Pure taste is just damn good vodka. Uh, it can be <laughs> drank neat or with any mixer, even Diet Mountain Dew, I learned. I was in a pinch. Uh, <laughs> and they have their new prize. Uh, barrel, so we're very excited uh, for Neft Vodka. Uh, did somebody just snort on that, my set? That was me. That was yeah. me. Lord, I thought y'all were dignified up oh. in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just a few words of pride before we dive into our show. L.A. Pride, On the Rocks will be at L.A. Pride. I am your official MC. Who's performing, you ask? I don't know, just Christina uh. Aguilera, Anita, MJ Rodriguez from Post, Eureka, Bob the Drag Queen, and Rebecca Black. Ooh, okay. okay. Wow. No, she's dope. She's so she's dope. dope. Okay, yeah. I'm going to take she's your word for it. <laughs> I'm going to be like, welcome, Rebecca Black. And oh. she's like, no, we love Rebecca Black. <laughs> she's out and proud. Um, I think she's moved on to Monday. Come on. <laughs> but head to laprideinthepark.org for your tickets. It's just going to be a really, really fun day, and I uh, couldn't be more proud to be part of it. Also for Pride, check out one of my most ambitious journalism interviews to date. Check out Metrosource Magazine, nationally on newsstands or at metrosource.com. Check out my in-depth interviews with every cast member and the creator of the new Queer as Folk series. We're back to Babylon. Um, and I uh, got to watch the show way, way a uh, long time ago, and you've never seen Queer as Folk uh, as inclusive and as colorful. Uh, Tony, do you have the picture of the, of the cover? Show it, please. <laughs> All that hard work. Oh, oh there it is. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> so we did seven interviews oh, in one wow. week. Yes. Come on, green hair. So wow. we got, yes, there you go. Uh, we got the exclusive, so <laughs> grab it on newsstands oh, now. Uh, oh, very interesting, very interesting articles, uh, and I, I'm I'm excited to see what people think of the new show. All right, let's get on to the show. Uh, let me introduce our guest for today, helping us kick off Pride Month in style. Pepper Mache, get ready to dive in the pool one more time. <laughs> the iconic, legendary queen of the dance floor, Pepper Mache, has another banger out just in time for Pride that will pack the dance floor to pre-pandemic levels. Dance and Lights Part 2, uh, which is slated to, to fully drop in, in June. Yes. Uh, we'll have 11 remixes by some of the hottest DJs out there, uh, including radio and extended remixes. Uh, Pepper Mache is a five-time top 10 Billboard charting artist who was uh, influenced by the 70s music scene. Uh, Pepper changed her life's journey from journalist, by the way, to singer after getting on stage to perform her own songs and finding an instant connection with the audience. Starting out as a session singer in L.A., she has sang for the likes of Tina Turner, Cher, Mick Jagger, Kebmo, Celine Dion, and I actually have a full list. You're not going to believe the full list. We're going to go over that in just a little bit. Yes. Uh, in the year 2000, Pepper transitioned from session singer to solo artist with her international chart single, Dive in the Pool. And I tell you, it's still sung at every other Pride. We did Palm Springs together. Yes, we did. Uh, girl, when you sang that, didn't matter <laughs> who, gay, straight, everything in between, old, young. 
everybody was dancing in the pool. Come on. Um, <laughs> um, it's always been considered the unofficial single for Showtime series Queers Folk, the, the U.S. version. So it's kind of perfect that we're both kind of in the Queers I Folk know, world now. Uh, she has celebrated success after success. Uh, she lives with her wife, Ellen, and she has something to say about being queer at an older age, supporting trans youth, yeah. and getting people out to vote, which, girl, nobody relax, because this vote, you're not ready for, for this vote that's going to be important. Please welcome back Pepper and Mache. Thank you, Alexander. It's, it's always such an honor to have you. Also joining us, Reverse, yeah. Toronto-based pop and R&B music group, heralded for their high concept art, pop, and inclusive messaging as a diverse collective of uh, BIPOC. BIPOC, is, is that how you say it up, up in Canada? Okay, because we, we do all the letters out here. B-I-B-C-R. It's good cardio. It's like, blah, 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 blah. Uh, queer and body positive members, the group has independently released two hit albums, garnered nearly one million social media followers across the platforms. Uh, they released their single, which is my favorite single, and I sing it all around the house. I sing it on dates, and I sing it when I'm bored. I sing it just all the time. Uh, Baby Boo, which we're actually going to take a little look at, off their critically acclaimed album, Poison Ivy, uh, which has been praised for its innovative uh, genre-bending aesthetic and deeply personal lyrical content, which tackles themes ranging from self love to systemic mm. racism. Recently, the a group received wow. international attention when the group's founder, Justice, came out as HIV positive in solidarity with National Black HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. Oh. The group's been profiled by ET Canada, Ear Milk, The Advocate, and more. Uh, I did a little interview with them, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Source yeah. Yeah. Please welcome yeah. Reverse Justice, Monroe, Ooh. Khadija, and Zach. Hey. Um, but Zach won't let you tag him on Instagram, so I'm not sure. What? Sure talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? a cannot tag. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. It's like what your exactly. grinder said. Ooh. Ooh. She doesn't Ooh. have grind. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> impersonating you then. I was like, mm-mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, reverse. I just have to know, um, for our audience, you know, you're in Canada. You guys have toured everywhere. But you are in L.A., not just for a quick visit. You're here for like a month. Yeah. I have to know, what, what do you think of L.A. now that you've been here for, for a bit? Honestly, we... I understand why th- this is the mecca of entertainment. Mm-hmm. I understand why this is the place reverse needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's fantastic here. The people have been great. The sun is amazing. We thrive mm-hmm. in it. Uh, it just feels amazing to feel like we're in the right place with the right people doing kind of the right things and to mm-hmm. on our path forward. Um, I'm still recovering from your little introduction piece. <laughs> I'm like a little teary-eyed. You're like, who are they? Yeah, I like, love them. <laughs> so just generally being here and having experiences like this and, and, and meeting Pepper and just, just I'm my mind is blown. Oh. <laughs> I will have you know about L.A., though. You know, people think of it as like the land of dreams and you see the reality of L.A. You see the poverty that's going mm. on. You see the homelessness. Mm. But then you also see how difficult it is to break into the industry. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing as an overnight sensation yeah. anymore, even if you're like an influencer on TikTok or whatnot. I know you love your TikTok. Um, <laughs> but it does, you come to L.A. and you have to hustle. You have to mm-hmm. work. You have Absolutely. to make the connections. Totally. It's nonstop. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it doesn't happen for years. Yeah. And that is the reality of L.A. So people come here with like big dreams it's like oh god i gotta work yeah bitch you gotta work yeah. you know, yeah. I, you know I, I, I i've gone on a few dates since i've said so a few days since i've been here like two, like three come and, on today and and, <laughs> and the, the first uh, the gentleman was like oh i'm a videographer i'm like okay real, that's really cool and then the second was i'm a videographer i'm like oh yep. okay that's really strange yeah. and then the third is i'm a videographer and i'm like okay i see a pattern here yeah. <laughs> I see a pattern here. and i work for only fans <laughs> <laughs> Which is no shame in that's that, good but work. there's that's a good lot. Work. Oh, girl, if I could do it, I would. It's like, mine would just be like baking pies all day on my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what is some of the reality of L.A. that you guys have? Because it's not like you're just visiting, like I said, where it's the excitement, then you have to like, day after day, you're away from home, you're out of your suitcase, and mm-hmm. so what's what's that kind of reality you like? You know what? Mm-hmm. Um, well, first things first, um, we are no stranger to the hustle. Yes. Like We've been um, together independently for 10 years, so coming out here and still hustling mm-hmm. is, is it's not new. We're used to it. Mm-hmm. And we are also just blessed to have great people who are supporting us, such as our publicist. I won't say his name because he doesn't like to like have his name shared or his face shared. So I'm gonna, like, <laughs> is that a good publicist? publicist? No, he's great. He's, he's very spe- shy. He's phenomenal. <laughs> but, um, That's very we, 
we do have um, support, which um, means so much to us being an independent act. Mm -hmm. um, but what was the other question that you asked? Like the, the reality of it. The, the real, okay, so I'm going to spill the tea. Keep it real, real. Hashtag all the way real. Is it like Honestly. your brother where you're in the same Airbnb? Oh my God, yes. Trust okay. and believe. Totally. Trust and believe. So we had to have a meeting yesterday because I, I don't oh, listen. Real. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's real. Yeah. Okay. I was so like, the, which real? The, 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 <laughs> the reality of the situation is, you know, we are, as much as we're family, we we are literally siblings. Mm -hmm. Like um, we've, we've been family for over 10 years. Um, we've known each other each other since we were kids yeah. um we still you know living together in the same quarters for how many hours a day <laughs> you don't really have you know sometimes you don't have um the space to kind of go and do your own thing um all the time you, you sometimes butt head so like we've been That's duking it out a little family. bit yeah we've been duking it out a little bit and um we <laughs> have two more weeks to go <laughs> oh my god in the <laughs> news reverse <laughs> yeah. but you know what no. our <laughs> the great thing this this is why I brought this up not just talk about about um uh, a situation that might be perceived as negative but the great thing about us is we we know how to deal with mm -hmm. the issues we are not contractually obligated so we it's not like we have to be here mm. the thing is we've learned how to communicate whenever there is an issue we sit down at the table and we're like okay bitch <laughs> <laughs> let's put it all on the table and speak the truth what is it that is causing these these issues or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be and we talk about it and we work it out and that's why we've lasted for 10 years yeah. Yeah. I, I love that and this is what awesome. I want the show to be like because like, you all have been on Pepper you've been on and when we're heading into Pride especially when we see corporate Pride and Target's mm. flashing out Pride and all that it's like Pride is just so lovely it's been a year. It's been yeah. two years. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the reality. And this is kind of the reality of pride. It's mm -hmm. the reality of getting along with your family, mm -hmm. not always getting along mm -hmm. with your family, but how do you move on? How do you join hands and open communication? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our divisiveness in the LGBTQ plus community comes from us just not communicating. A lack mm -hmm. of respect. Yes. Making yes. assumptions, yeah. but also being so riled up that people are afraid to ask us questions. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. And sometimes yeah. that can be as damaging too. It's like, yes, I want to respect you, but I have questions. Yes. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. somebody like me that puts my foot in my mouth more than a taco <laughs> bell. <laughs> <laughs> <It's like, "Rah!" laughs> but that's good. So you had the meeting and mm -hmm. you know, and we're still here. It, it, we're yeah. still, listen, listen it's, it's, if you got a phone call this I morning, know, like, uh, unfortunately, reverse won't be. No, no we're here. No. We're we, here. We love each other. We respect each other. And we do we do that so that we can push past and move past and learn how to respect each other better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know why I've been solo? That's, That's very real. real. That's That's real. real. That is That's very real. real. I learned a long time ago that if you're not ready to be in a group, mm -hmm. yeah. which I was in a group of two other young women, mm -hmm. and I was the older one. Mm -hmm. I was in a really great group called Voice Boxing okay. with um, Lenny White, okay. who's the famous drummer, who was with Chick Corea, okay. Stanley Clark, mm -hmm. that crazy guitar player of theirs <laughs> who went off in his separate direction. Mm. And when that project ended, and it, it failed, all because of political mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mayhem mm -hmm. within the label. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I got, someone came up to me at a show and says, you too good to sing background. Mm. And I was singing for Vonda Shepard, who was the woman for Alec McBeal. Yes. Okay, wow. okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. He says, you go to Europe, sing dance music, for DJ, oh. and you're like, okay. <laughs> I had no idea that, no, no idea <laughs> <laughs> what he was talking wow. about. And then when I decided to make the jump to do dance music, I said, you know what? I'll be, I'll be better off by myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I miss the camaraderie. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. The togetherness of other people being around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to communicate to talk over the material together yeah. Yeah. instead of being one one force. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But to your point, yeah. it's really understanding what you're good at, what you can excel at, and also mm -hmm. when to know, hey, you know, this is not working. It's okay to make a decision to make a change mm -hmm. or to mm -hmm. move on. And right. sometimes you come back, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's just being self-aware yes. yes. um, and being more in love with the actual art that you're putting out rather than just the image. Yes. 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 You know, we know exactly. there's some people out there that are... Um, not like a sincere quality, but the image is good, mm -hmm. but then you listen to their music and you're like, 
Fast <laughs> <laughs> <Ask> forward. <laughs> Oops, skip. Oops. Uh, Pepper, but I wanted to know, you came uh, from Indiana. You moved from Indiana when you Indiana. were in your 20s oh. to pursue your career. When was that kind of choice that you were like, well, let's give up the home that I'd known, the area that I'd known, and let's, let's take that jump. What was that like? Military brat. <laughs> oh, oh okay. okay. My father, my stepfather was in the Army, and my mother was strictly from Indiana. Mm. She <laughs> Basically, she told the husband at the time, uh, I do not go to Europe. <laughs> I do not fly on airplanes. <laughs> So what we did, we ended up in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know all of Fort Leonard. Leonard. Okay. okay. <laughs> do, do you know, baby? No. You know Never heard of it. Okay. I, I do. I do. <laughs> it's, it's very Mayberry life, mm-hmm. <laughs> if you know the TV show. <laughs> and being kids from around the world, mm-hmm. you know, I gravitated toward that. That mm-hmm. was my element. <clears throat> And I was there for 12 years until I decided, I think I'll marry my boyfriend because he's more like my dad. He's responsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were both 19. Oh, Oh, wow. (laughs) Your first single should have been Daddy Issues. (laughs) Oh, my. (laughs) That's a good title right now. That's a good title. Write it down. (laughs) It's my biography. That's all. (laughs) So that's how I ended up not living in Indiana, Mm -hmm. but I was born there because of my mother's previous hmm. marriage. Uh-huh. Okay. And now I have all these stepbrothers and sisters that are still there. And matter of fact, one of the uh, prides that I'm doing next week is Indianapolis oh, Pride. Wow. Awesome. Wow. So awesome. I'll get to see family. See family. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's so nice. So great. We have so much shared. Uh, so I used to travel to Indianapolis all the time to visit my yeah. dad growing up. And all of my uh, half-brothers and half-sisters, I would see them uh, you know, at, when I would visit in the summer it's times, a, yes. what a and world. Mm-hmm. Indianapolis, the from far, far, far you away. Know it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, small town. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that both groups are here because Pepper, you know, you are part of Pride history w- mm-hmm. with your music. Um, in reverse, you guys celebrate the music of the '90s and the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like this circle of music has come together. Yeah. Uh, but you're looking at the music industry from from totally Two different, d- different sides, sides different nations even. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to know, Pepper, how has the music industry changed the most since when you first started? Um, and I'm going to ask reverse a- as well because you guys started in 2012, right? 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, this group we came together in 2012. Right. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I started. Uh, basically when that person walked up on the stage and told me I should go to Europe, I went to uh, London. Mm -hmm. I was told that someone had left a cassette at a label called Azuli Records in London. And from that relationship, the people called me and they said, we would like for you to join our label. On this label, label, they had Thelma Houston, a Wonderful singer by the name of Ada Dyer. Mm. Mega divas. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, am I capable oh. of, of being able to hang with these women? Because they had history. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Even, yeah. even if with me not being in the dance world. Yeah. I went there, wrote nine songs, blah, 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 one after another. But then he told me, he says, you know what, Pepper? I've decided to go with the DJs. Oh. So I'm not really promoting artists anymore. Mm-hmm. And that kind of destroyed me, mm-hmm. babe, mm-hmm. because I thought that, that I was on my way with yeah. this little mm-hmm. label. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. But before you know it, I ended up singing from that into Bobby Caldwell. <gasps> what you won't do I love Bobby Caldwell for love. <laughs> I love that song. You tried everything. Oh my god. You can't give, give up. up. Yes. I so I was Sorry. with him. <laughs> I, just had a I was I with him for song. 17 years. Wow. That's amazing. Until the economy started breaking mm-hmm. down and that changed. <laughs> so when I decided to get into dance music, I was known as a house Music mm-hmm. artist, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yes, soulful house, yeah, yeah. like Cece Peniston, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Who's a good friend? Come yeah. on, wow, amazing. And, he's like, he's like, and, <laughs> and with that background, it was almost like, okay, I can do this. Uh, what they call garage, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. garage, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> the bomb, yeah, come on, yes. Arful Dodger, yes. Uh-huh. 
uh, Julie McKnight, Julie. people like that. Okay, yeah. who used to be married to Brian McKnight. Mm. Oh, mm. we just had a conversation singer. with Brian McKnight like yesterday. We did. Yeah, in the car. Yeah. His ex-wife is is my m- hero. Come oh, on. Right. Oh my God. She can sing. Yes. That kind of background in dance music, I was known for. But when I got to America, circuit. Mm. Oh. Mm-hmm. The boys got the shirts on. Right. Oh. Yes. And they're just wiggling. Come on. <laughs> right. They're doing their thing. Yeah. I, I got into that, but I've been told <laughs> that everyone looked at me as being the next big thing mm-hmm. at the time. But I didn't know <laughs> because I was new to dance music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know a lot of the genres. Wow. And, and I'm just now getting reacquainted. And now this tribalness. I call it, honey. It's a it's a banger. <laughs> <laughs> I like that sound. Like Afro beats. Boo! I love them, okay, but yeah, I yeah. but I haven't touched them yet because mm-hmm. I got this this young woman who's a DJ from Cuba. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, okay. Fun that I'm working with. I so love that. Little piece of track that you'll hear okay. will be what she did. Ooh, I'm excited! I can't wait. I'm excited. So excited. Well, I think that's a big part of music that it's totally changed. Mm-hmm. As as we're seeing racial diversity, inclusivity yes. mm-hmm. in Hollywood films, now we're seeing it, especially in the music. Yes. And so you're hearing sounds from all different parts of the world. Um, and it is uh, an exciting time, yeah. very exciting time. In fact, uh, Michael Feinstein just did the great American songbook to country music with country music stars. Wow. So oh. you talk about like a black people like, well, no, storytelling in country music is the same as the old standards yeah. Yeah. when you tell your story in a different way. So it was a perfect, perfect mix. Interesting. Wow. So I, fun. I, I love that. <laughs> um, but for reverse, You've stopped and started, you've shifted, you've added different elements, such as your reactionary mm. videos. Even the way you present your music has, has changed. How do you personally think that the music industry has changed for the group over this last decade? It's very interesting because for us, um, just as kind of alluded to before, like even before the four of us were together, we've all kind of had our own history. So we have our ideas, like we grew up in the 90s, early 2000s. We have our ideas of what the music industry is, mm-hmm. and we're constantly having to remind each other that like it's not like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly. not what labels yes. are looking for. That is not how marketing works anymore. Mm-hmm. Like get on TikTok. Like it's just, yeah. Yeah. it's totally different for us. And we have to kind of, it's a mental shift for us a lot mm-hmm. of times of like, okay, we have a new song, we have a new single, and mm-hmm. we know it's gonna be amazing, but like, how do, what are, what are the kids doing today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and mm-hmm. we're not that old, but like, you know what I mean? It, just, it feels it's, like it's such, a, from year such to year. a huge yes. difference, yes. yeah. And you can't sure. just be an artist anymore, you have no. to be the marketing, you have to yeah. be the business, you have yeah. to be a social media whiz. It's like, can I just sing and <laughs> yes. do my thing? Yeah. And that's it for us, because okay. we've been independent for over 10 years, and like, we have our little, like, we're not opposed to a label, but mm. we've heard a lot of those horror stories of getting picked up and then you get put on the shelf and nothing happens and we're like if we can control it ourselves then we will as far as we need to but then we are doing everything we are the marketing team and Mm -hmm. the social media managers and the booking agent and the it is exhausting (laughs) you know one positive thing that i'll just add to that is i I think where before you mentioned the word uh, well you didn't say the word facade but i uh you know you're fancier than me i get it zach the the, the, (laughs) the presentation (laughs) yeah the facade (laughs) uh, the presentation (laughs) yeah of of artists and i think prior there was kind of the the i don't want to say illusion but um you know now i feel real human stories and being able to share that exactly yeah social Um, media has allowed for mm -hmm. real people to be telling real stories Mm -hmm. and not yes. be like a label plant or like a label um, this impossible in, version that, in 2012 you know. when we started we heard constantly that like we love the music we love the sound we love but we don't get you guys we yeah. don't yeah. understand and couldn't see where to place a group like us in the music industry whereas today you're seeing like Lizzo's on TikTok every two mm-hmm. seconds and Lil Nas mm-hmm. X is out there and like you're seeing so much more diversity because mm-hmm. they build their own audiences mm-hmm. yeah. and it opens really doors for groups like us mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah. And being part of record label does not equal success. In fact, mm-hmm. we know that musicians don't make music by putting out albums anymore. Mm-hmm. Not at all. Um, mm-hmm. People don't even listen to full albums. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, there's so much great music that's going yeah. unlistened to. Yeah. 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 It's part of a collection. It's people are just listening to the singles because that's all they, you know, they can just stream them. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, when yeah. you would get like Madonna's new CD and you would just listen to every oh. song over and over yeah. and over, even the B-side, and you'd be like, oh, you would you would get the theme of the full album. Mm-hmm. Now yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. we got to impress you in 30 seconds or less, yeah. which right. is so right. challenging. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Ooh, okay, tell us how you really <laughs> feel. <laughs> okay. Because <That's laughs> <exhausting. laughs> So in honor of Pride, I wanted to know if we could uh, share our coming out stories, oh. uh, whether you're part of the queer committee, uh, co- community or an ally or, or what have you. Um, what's your own coming out story? And it doesn't have to be your sexuality. Um, and Pepper, I want to know uh, first with you, you know, you've been entrenched in the gay culture. Uh, it was a few years ago. I learned that you had a wife, Ellen. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Wait, what? What? She's she's one of us." <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. So I wanted to know uh, when you kind of first felt that part of your life and what your kind of coming out story was. It was really uh, pretty important to me at the time because it was at the downturn of the of the industry. No shows. Mm. Mm-hmm. People weren't flying. Mm-hmm. You know, 9 11 yeah. happened. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Everything was just coming apart. Mm. And there was a lot of transition in my life. I had already came from a marriage of 27 years mm. to mm. being on my own for the first time in 12 years doing this whole musical mm-hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. And I looked in the mirror, and I keep telling my wife this all the time. I said, I looked in the mirror and I said, God, please send me someone who would would accept me for me. Mm. And I ended up doing an AIDS benefit with uh, uh, an organization here in Los Angeles called Life Group. Was it their Saddle Up? Saddle Saddle Up. up. And because they (laughs) give you a horse, Oh, (laughs) and being a kid from, from the Midwest, I was used to that riding. They would always give me a horse as long as I was the entertainment. And they would have an auction and a barbecue. And lo and behold, I end up on this trail and I'm watching this woman up on a mound mm-hmm. from the tra- you know, from the trail. She's wrestling with not one horse but wrestling. two. Oh my. Oh my. Her horses. And she she will tell <laughs> you that she had to take both of them because the other one would destroy the stable if either one was separate. Mm -hmm. And I I said, wow, that's really strange. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm the last horse in the trail. Mm -hmm. And, you know, go forward. I'm getting ready for my show. Nothing to it. No big deal. I'm doing my thing, singing, dive in the pool, and, yeah. and one little ditty after another. <laughs> and then I come off the stage, and this woman is just smiling at me. Aww. <laughs> That's so sweet. And she had chaps on. Yes. 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 Chaps. That's yes, a me lit. too. <laughs> I love that. That's something and, we share. <laughs> and I swear to you, it was it was like when you get hit oh. with a little hammer. Mm-hmm. Some and I'm and and we just talked for a, for a few minutes, and then she left, and you know we exchanged emails and information, and before you know it, after what was it, babe, six weeks or so, I finally went out to where she lived mm-hmm. on a farm. It was like the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> this beautiful area, which I had lived in Los Angeles for almost 35, 40 years, you guys. And I had never heard of never been there. Palos Verdes Peninsula. Oh, oh. it is gorgeous <laughs> out there, but it is out there. And hopefully <laughs> you'll get to see it once you spend time with yeah. me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know you'll have to come over, yes. and, and I'll I'd take you. To. We'll take you around. Mm-hmm. But be... but we, I went to her farm and I never left. Oh. You're so I cute. S- <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't out of a story this. Book. It's so cute. I never left. Because I felt that we oh. that we were together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm, you know, and mm-hmm. then when it came time for marriage equality, mm-hmm. she asked me to marry her, mm-hmm. and I was saying, 
don't you want to be single a little bit longer? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she says, no, I think we, we need to be together. Mm. And it's been like that since. I love I, that. Yeah. I'm so happy that's, for that's you. That's so beautiful. beautiful. Now, Pepper, was it difficult yeah. coming out, though, later in life, and especially when the industry no. had known you a certain way? Mm-hmm. You know what? Your family had known you a certain way. It was like I told my son the next day after I went home to get my clothes, <laughs> I said, son, I think I found someone. And it's a woman. He mm-hmm. says, Mom, I'm happy for you because mm-hmm. you've been all by yourself. I was raising my grandbaby by myself. Uh, I had a bipolar son that I didn't know mm-hmm. who was running in and out of our lives. Yeah. So it was time for me to make a move to take care of for self. You. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Good for mm-hmm. you. So yes. I did that and and I had always been a champion of of gay rights, yes. mm-hmm. LGBTQIA plus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because I just didn't understand <coughs> how anyone could hate a community mm-hmm. of people so virulent mm-hmm. as not to let them live. Yeah. And and I had kids coming up to me after they would hear me do dive in the pool. Mm. And they said, Miss Pepper, a lot of us came out to your music. Mm-hmm. And they would be in tears. <laughs> yep, <100%. laughs> These people would be in tears and I'm standing there thinking, what is going on? <laughs> because I thought it was one of the dumbest songs that I had ever did <laughs> in my <laughs> life. Because y'all have to understand, I had 20 to 35 years yeah. of singing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then she screamed, dive in, dive in the pool. And that was the one. And Barry, <laughs> soaking wet. Eight, two, three, four. Yeah. And Barry, Barry is telling me, all I want you to do is the talk. Oh, wow. And the, the thing that came up, the idea was that, let me pretend that I'm my mother. Mm. Who used to always yell at us? I hear that. Coming to yeah, eat. I hear yeah. that. <laughs> she'd she'd go out in the backyard of the of the base where we were living mm. in Texas, and she'd scream out our names. <laughs> Jean Marie, it's time to dinner. That's so cute. <laughs> I love that. Just yelling, <laughs> and that's how I came up with it. And then I went back to work. <laughs> And the next six months that I find out, icon, yes, the DJ a pool, legend. iconic, the DJ pool is blowing up at the Winter Music Conference, absolutely, in Florida. They're saying, "Baby, I think you got a hit." Yeah, and this mm-hmm. was before email. I love yeah. that. Amazing, right, Tony? I Just love crazy. That. What a Tony good would story. Know so what a good story. story. So <laughs> lovely. I but it is it. you are like you're challenging the crowd. It's like come out wherever you are, come party. Mm-hmm. This is your life. You yes. take control of that. Yeah. It's not just about diving into an actual no. pool. <laughs> and I have seen you perform that song in little venues for like like uh, Saddle Up LA, and I've seen you sing it for thousands of people. Here's the thing: is like all you have to do is hear. You could go like fast forward to five oh six, and you know exactly. Let's get soaking wet. Yeah. And she's like, she's able to just dive in and out. Like, I love and it. Literally, I've seen you perform it everywhere. And she's like, okay, that's good. That's <laughs> believe, believe what I'm telling you guys. I, you know, it, you talking about a fluke. Mm. That's it was how it happens major, sometimes. Yeah. That's it was how a it major happens. fluke. It was the number two song wow. under music for that whole year. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love and, that. And, and I, I didn't miss- write it. <laughs> I wish I did, <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Where's my sheet music? And it's like a post-it with your lyrics. Here you are. That's so cute. Here you are, Miss <laughs> Post-it. Oh no, I love it. And I love that story. I feel like it's all June, I get so emotional. I love Pride so much. But I think it's really important. Like, I don't know, like, at what point in your life or what age you guys met. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, for so many LGBTQ youth, like they don't ever see an example mm-hmm. of like, there's my future. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like you see mm-hmm. all the like sad stories mm-hmm. and the horror stories and the deaths and the people get like always tragedy. But yes. to be able to see like, oh. here are people who found love mm-hmm. at whatever stage in their lives and they're just living out the rest of their lives happily. Exactly. That could be you too. Exactly. Like it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And the majority, like your point, the majority of Hollywood films that are come out deal with youth. Because we know the youth mm-hmm. are the ones that are asking for it and they're engaging, yeah. such as social media. But there is a population that we often forget about, and that is the elder yes. of our community, especially yes. during Pride when it's all yeah. about Pride and parties and this. It's like, well, there's a population that should be celebrating Pride right alongside us. Where's yeah. their part? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Love it. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, okay, Rivers, share your Ooh. coming out stories, whether it's, a, oh, it could be any part of your life, you coming out, coming out as an entertainer, coming out as, mm. as w- what have you, but where was it a moment in your life that you kind of mm. had to make a decision to tell your truth? S- something does come to mind for me, and it was, it was a moment where I, I was fully sharing my honest truth, and it was coming out in a different way. Um, I remember going to a sports game, uh, and I was entertaining someone. And I was, I was out in my life, but in my personal life. Mm-hmm. And in this kind of setting, I, I, I was entertaining someone, and you know, I, I wasn't really open with like who I, obviously, my sexuality at the time. And they had their girlfriend there, and this is a, a male I'm talking about. And the girlfriend, I remember at one point was, was like, "Oh, the, um, you know, d- are you dating currently? Uh, uh, do, you, do you, does she have a name?" Um, And in that moment, time stopped (laughs) and two doors presented themselves in front of me. Mm -hmm. And there was the door, the easy door, what I perceived as the easy door. Uh, And then there was a door where it was just like, you know what? I don't want to I don't want to be that. Um, I don't want to be anything beyond what is authentically me Mm -hmm. and to just live a life where I can share that Mm -hmm. and be proud of that Mm -hmm. and really speak those words like I am proud so uh, uh, my response to her was, well, his name, yeah. you know, oh. is, is such and such. And from that moment, uh, the couple that I was entertaining, they started to share with me that they go on uh, pride circuits. Yeah. Uh, wow. uh, this gentleman was a doctor mm-hmm. and, and he, he would like put on like colorful thongs and they would have a colorful umbrella. Oh, and <laughs> I do not think I would have learned that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If, if I didn't share my truth. Yeah. 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 That was their coming out. That was their coming out. And so here we were kind of both wearing our shells yeah. and like kind of like nervous to share our, our inner guts. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, from one person sharing their truth, it just was this beautiful moment where it was like someone else got to as well. Mm-hmm. And that was a, a kind of like a, uh, uh, in a way, a, com- a coming out for me too because from that point <coughs> forward, it was, it was a, a turning point for me. Mm-hmm. Where I just wanted to just live along s- as straight as possible along that that line of truth, and that's really what pride. A lot of what pride is for me mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. What for the audience that's, that's listening that m- may be thinking of coming out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be some big coming mm-hmm. out, you know, statement on social media. <laughs> no. It can be in a small way, one person and another person. But yeah. like you said, it's it's kind of uh, that that rush. It's like this is for me, for me, and mm-hmm. it's like the yeah. key that opens up that one door that you choose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. that's really. Yes. I think, like, your question, um, I always say, and it's really funny to me, that, like, I never came out. There was never any one moment where I was Mm -hmm. like, here it is, I'm coming out. But whenever people ask, like, when did you come out? I'm like, literally every day. Every (laughs) time I meet a new person, the assumption is always, you're straight, you're this, whatever. And, like, every time you introduce somebody into your life, you have to share this news over and over again. And I'm like, that's kind of what it feels like for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like... (laughs) It was really, there was a time we did a, a tour in British Columbia, which is where I grew up, and my parents were there. Um, and my parents had set up one of the shows for us, and one guy came, and he was like, oh, you guys are the gay group. Or like, three-fourths of that. you, three-fourths yes. of you are the gay group. And it was literally that, mo- I was big, grown person. I was like, does my mom not know that I'm queer? <laughs> like, I literally <laughs> never thought that I had to say it out loud until that moment. And I was like, oh, I guess maybe... There should have been like a, I'm coming out, but it just never (laughs) happened. It's just like, I live my life and every time reverse, we do things and we go out and we're doing Mm -hmm. PR or whatever. I'm like, I just kind of are, we're constantly talking about it. So I'm just assuming that I'm coming out every day. Yeah. Here I am still queer. (laughs) Like, But it's funny because people do make that assumption about you, even on social media. Yeah. That's, yeah. (laughs) It's very interesting. (laughs) Well, Justice, you kind of came out twice, yes. so to speak, yeah. publicly. Yeah, well, I mean, I came out um, gay. I mean, obviously, when I was um, <laughs> 14. There's no what? assumption There's with no this assumption. one. Especially in L.A., you're like, European or gay? I don't know. Well, well you know what? Well, you know what? Now, now, uh, yes. when when she met me, like, you would have oh, yeah. never Oh, yeah. Oh, my know. gosh. You would yeah. never yeah. know. I only started to tap into my divine feminine energy like two years ago. Yeah. Mm. Like you, the Baby Boo music video. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. That, that was it. That <laughs> was that was it. Because before that, I was like hyper masculine, like army cadet, like trust. But that video for me, it was a statement. It was a moment where I was like, okay, I remember growing up because I came out when I was fourteen. That's and really young. My whole wow. family. Yeah. My whole mm-hmm. family 
turn their backs on me. Mm-hmm. Everybody except my mom. Oh. And um, so, anyway, I'm not gonna get into all that. Mm-hmm. But in the Baby Boop music video, I remember being told um, that boys wear blue, <clears throat> they don't wear pink. You can't play with dolls. Um, no, you can't take dance lessons. You're, my sister will take dance, but I have to play sports. So in that video, I was like, I'm gonna wear a tutu. <laughs> Mm. I'm going to wear it. It's going to be pink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have makeup on. I'm going to do all the things that I was told boys can't do. Mm. And I'm going to dance and I'm going to flick my hair and I'm going to, I'm going to, it was a statement for me. Yeah. So, gorgeous. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. that was it. Yeah. That, yeah. that was it. On, but if you see the, the shirt that's being covered, it's a Biggie Spall. It's a Notorious B.I.G. So I still have to show you, I'm still hood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still hood. Don't get it twisted. But, this hood dude is still gonna rock all that pink and that skirt and that makeup and be authentically who They're he is. Yes. And what I'm so proud of with that video is that we had a member, uh, we have this wonderful fan base called the Ivy League. If any, if any of you are watching, Shout out hi. Ivy League. Yes, Ivy. They're so supportive of us. And we had a lot of them who are very, very young. Mm-hmm. Remember, we did this. Um, what was it like a, a Zoom? Um, yeah, we did chat like a, the, a, our, a I, virtual meet and greet because it was yeah, COVID. Yeah, so we yeah. did a virtual meet and greet mm-hmm. on Zoom. With our street team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was one particular <laughs> young man who, um, what did he say to me again? He, he said that he had never seen anybody that looked like him doing what I was doing in that video. Mm-hmm. And it like changed his life. Mm-hmm. And he at the time, what it sounded like is he wasn't entirely sure. Um, kind of how he identified, like in terms of whether he was queer or not. I, it, it sounded like it was more like um, I grabbed that it was like a, mm. a, a straight young black male. Mm. Um, but anyway, I'm not gonna anyway. Um, <laughs> but no. So anyway, that moment in itself, um, like, was so powerful for me, mm-hmm. and it really just mm-hmm. um, uh, solidified, validated the direction mm-hmm. that I've chosen to go in as an artist within this group. Mm-hmm. Um, so that video was another type of coming out for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I um, also on February 7th of 2021, mm-hmm. I <laughs> told our YouTube audience of almost 700,000 people that I was HIV wow. positive. And that for me was... Mm-hmm. Um, Mm-hmm. It wasn't hard mm-hmm. because I I need I came out when I was fourteen. There's a reason why I can't live my life with lies or secrets. Mm-hmm. It literally like it, it stifles me. And I knew um, I knew that at some point in time I'm going to have to share it. And I didn't have to because these people don't really know me. They they know your internet the perception persona, of you. Yeah. Yeah. and I don't know them, so I didn't owe anybody anything. But it was all it was for me. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you one really quick story that that I will never forget. So, the day before I came out with that video, um, I was going home, and in the wind, this is this is like I promise you, this is so real. <laughs> in the wind was flapping this piece of paper that I didn't really pay attention to. Um, and I was like, oh, garbage. And then I went inside my house. <laughs> but then the next day, like right before I, uh, sorry, right after I released, we, we clicked hit on, send on that video. And then all the press started coming out on um, Black National HIV AIDS Awareness Day, February 7th. Mm. Um, I, my, my partner at the time, he looked out the window and he's like, look at that. And I look out the window and right in front of me in the bushes was this piece of paper that said in all caps, free. Wow. That was the same piece of paper that was flapping around <laughs> the day before. Ooh. And I and I saw it because it had this like red double line on the paper and I could see that it was the same piece of paper. And I, I literally was like, oh my God, like mm-hmm. like is like the universe mm-hmm. was like, now you're free. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I started crying. Yeah. It was it was like it was like I will never forget that moment. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So beautiful. Come on. So beautiful. <laughs> well, you know, and kind of sharing, <laughs> also sharing that beautiful. feminine and masculine energy. Beautiful. You know, we wonder why the U.S. Yeah. is having so many older conservatives trying to limit what our youth are doing mm-hmm. because our youth are expressing themselves mm-hmm. that way. Mm-hmm. There are terms like non-binary and fluid that are just now part of our vernacular mm-hmm. that used to be just a little part of our community and now yeah. everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Actors in Hollywood, big names are coming out as non-binary and fluid. Yeah. As a journalist, now when yes. I get press releases, there's a section that tells you how to address pronouns. them, for their Absolutely. pronouns, or how they identify, or an actor who has come out as non-binary. Yeah. One of the actors from Queer as Folk, when I interviewed him two months ago, mm-hmm. uh, he he was, was he, and now he is non-binary, yeah. and he went through that, that kind of yeah. journey. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, 
Uh, Jesse Keitel, who was also in Queer as Folk, was on Big Sky as non-binary, mm. and now she has come out as trans during wow. this whole process. Wow. And it's also wow. to all of our lives and to your life, too, is that mm-hmm. our evolution never stops. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. There are so many terms that you could be this one day, this the next yeah. day, and it doesn't matter because we're yeah. always evolving, yeah. and there's nobody to tell you, stay in that box that, that, that you're in. Yeah. 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 Nothing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, it's, I love it's that. It's an exciting time, but it's also very dangerous towards the other side, and that's why they're trying to limit yeah. all of our, our all of our voices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Monroe, I, I want to know yes. for you what what is your kind of coming out mm. story? My coming out story, kind of like Khadija. I don't think I really had a moment where I like came out to to everybody. I do remember one little story that I told like my close little friends. Uh, we went out to eat um, at this wing place, and I was so nervous because I knew that that's something that I wanted to tell them. Um, cause I had recently at that time gone into the show, the L word and I was obsessed Ooh. like, and also like, um, musicians like Tegan and Sarah, like for mm. me, when I was watching them, I was like, Oh, yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why, why am I feeling these things? Yeah. <laughs> What's oh. happening to me? You know? Um, so anyways, we're eating wings and I put Come the on, wing wings. Come on wings. I love wings. Like, I'm hungry. Let's get some Postmates. <laughs> so I put the wings down and I was like, guys, I have to tell you something. And they were like, they're eating like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, I think I also like women. And then they're like, mm-hmm, pass the hot dog. <laughs> and I was just like, but no, I'm telling you, like, this is, this is, this is something important to me. Like, mm. are you guys okay with that? I was like, do you guys still love me? Mm. Oh. And God, they were like, your question. They, <laughs> they were yeah. like, yeah, of course. Pass the hot <laughs> sauce. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it was something because you don't love people Mm -hmm. for their sexuality. Mm -hmm. You know, you love them as a whole. Mm -hmm. And they loved me for me, despite who I loved. Mm -hmm. And they were just like, no, we love you, Monroe, as a whole, as everything that you are, everything that you represent. And it doesn't matter about who you love or, you know, all all that stuff. So for me, that was kind of my, I guess, coming out in a sense. But also to my family, I, more so to my mother, um, I was, in a long-term relationship with a woman. And it was really, really hard for her mm-hmm. to um, accept that. I'm an Italian woman, so I grew up in a full Italian family, like hardcore, like I bleed sugo, which is <laughs> sauce <laughs> in Italian. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so to to her, she was like, oh, it's just your friend. Mm. And oh, I, had to, I had to live mm. with that term that she was going by she at the time um was my friend Mm -hmm. and it was always a friend a friend a friend and then at one time i was like mom this is my partner i would Mm -hmm. like to bring them to thanksgiving i would like to bring them to christmas Mm -hmm. i would like to bring them over to our house and introduce them as my partner Mm -hmm. um and it was just battles Mm -hmm. it was battles and battles and it's not that she's she's not a bad person she didn't understand Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. you know she didn't she didn't know what this world was because Mm -hmm. you know my mother is an immigrant and she came from a a, a world so different from the world that we live today Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so it took some time for her to understand and then you know finally accept it and by the time she accepted my partner coming into the family. We kind of like fizzled out, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like that was like trauma in itself. <laughs> so, um, but it was in that moment of the breakup mm-hmm. where my mother said, you know, if they love you, they will like, because I was like, well, they're never going to come back and be with me and I'm going to be alone forever. And they were like, she was like, no, like if they love you, if whatever's meant to be, whoever it is, Mm -hmm. they will come to you, it will be for you. Mm -hmm. If this person is not for you, you will find someone else, whoever they may be, maybe a man, woman, whoever. And it was in that moment that I was like, okay, she gets it, she (laughs) understands, Mm -hmm. you know? But I think being a queer woman, and I use the term queer before, I was like pansexual, bisexual, and I think the beauty of, you know, being a part of this community is that like you were saying, you don't have to stick to one term yeah. your entire mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. You're completely evolving mm-hmm. all the time. So for me, the word queer also means free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm able to be free <coughs> and do and love and be who I am no matter what. Mm. So exactly. still being a queer woman, um, I am now in a straight relationship, <laughs> quote unquote, um, but I'm still very much part of this community. Yeah. Doesn't mean that I lose my 
you know, my queer card. <laughs> Your queer card's gone. You know, <laughs> right, that, that, right. that doesn't mean that. Yeah. Um, and I've found a partner who is also very much accepting mm-hmm. and not only accepting but willing to learn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yes. engage and be a part of it and like ask questions that sometimes they'll be like oh is it okay if i ask that and i was like no ask those mm-hmm. questions yeah. please yeah. That's what yeah. Saying. It's like, we can't be afraid to ask questions because yes. we'll right. never learn yeah. yeah and it's so important mm-hmm. the more you ask the more that you're learning yeah. right and just the fact that they are so open themselves to be willing to be a part of any situation, like, oh, I'm gonna go to you know this gay event, or I'm gonna go to a Pride, and like, absolutely, let's go, we're ready. Like, mm-hmm. I'm gonna put my shirt on too, you know, like, <laughs> so supportive. And wow. it's just as people, you know, yeah. when you find your people that are supportive <clears throat> of you and who you are, who you love, who you represent, it's you can be and do whatever you want in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's come on, is. girl. And I, I do love that we've taken queer back as a positive yes. for our community. Yes. Because yes. your point, it's like, it's the most fluid term out there. It can mean whatever you want exactly. it to mean. Exactly. It means everything and right. not limiting it. It's like Buddhism for, for our community. It's like, <laughs> it's just, you know, be at peace. Yeah. Like queer. Yes. Oh, I love that word now. Yes. And before, you used to be so scared when you would hear it, you yeah. would like flinch because, mm-hmm. God, it was such a bad word. Yeah. Yeah. But we have taken it back. We've made yes. it look good. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. All right. Who's ready for a little music? Come on. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Pepper yes. Mache, Dancing Lights, part two. Uh, <laughs> what's it all about? Uh, and what inspired you to be like, okay, now's the time to, to release this. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> it started out being a lyric that was given to DJs to put music to. Oh. And like I was telling Zach, this particular um, person who won the contest about 15 years ago, oh, wow. he didn't give me his information. <laughs> He didn't give me his name. I love that for him. Oh, no. <laughs> if you're watching. Me, I know. And I'm going to tell him, you know, if you put it out, you know, I'm coming after you because it'll be part one. Mm. And then it'll be up to you to get yeah. the remixers. All yeah. right. Because for the, the second version, I met this wonderful DJ, DJ remixer woman from Cuba. Mm-hmm. Mm who happens to be a drummer. And I told her, I said, wouldn't it be great if we we could put a reggaeton? Oh my, come on reggaeton. (laughs) Version of the Mm -hmm. track. And (laughs) our version of reggaeton, we were told by promoters, it's not reggaeton, (laughs) it's garacha. Okay. Which is is the faster version, which is like if you have Skrillex meeting J Balvin. Okay. 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 Interesting. And Bad Bunny, from what I understand. I love Bad Bunny. I don't know who Bad Bunny is, so you have to teach me who Bad Bunny is. (laughs) Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are so cute, I just want to take you home. But this is the version. (laughs) This is what they're putting out is the faster version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we came up with, the little piece that I'm going to play for you, is the tribal, which I love the sound because it's like pots and pans Mm -hmm. banging, Mm -hmm. bringing everybody to To the kitchen. Let's go. (laughs) Dive in the kitchen was the original title. Dive in the (laughs) kitchen. It's like, girl, I got you covered there. (laughs) And her name is DJ Marisol Music. Come on, DJ Marisol Music. Yes. Yes. Follow. Here's Pepper Mache singing Dancing Lights, part two. Charms. I lose my senses when we head out on the floor. That's when I lose control. You break down my defenses. Thrill me with your love's desire. Can't you feel my heart so fine? Never knew that love could be so right tonight. 
When dancing with my baby 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 Baby, baby, yeah, baby. Move it to the left, move it to the right. Keep bumping, jumping, keep jumping, bumping. Move it to the left, move it to the right. Keep bumping, jumping, keep jumping, bumping. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Jumping, bumping, yeah, jumping, jumping, bumping. Oh, yeah! I love it. Yeah. 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 Oh, God, Pepper, every time you come sing, last time you were here, you sang House of the Rising Sun. Yes, ma'am. Um, oh. And you sang it totally a cappella. Yes. And our audience just went crazy. My heart was just like, because you do sing so many different genres. Mm. You've sung as Sister Jean. Um, Which is, uh, I'm doing a country project. Oh, there you go. Because I found out that Monica, mm. y'all know who mm. Monica is. Like, mm -hmm. Mo like Brandy Mo Monica? Like Monica, like Monica. Monica. Oh. When, I, when I read that she was getting ready, and I'm going to say this, I was doing it 20 years ago, and I knew that I didn't have a fighting chance in the market because of the way things were. Mm -hmm. oh. So I put it on the back burner. Well, I'm bringing it out now. Mm -hmm. yes. Sister Jean McLean, okay. which is my real name. Okay. So I have my, my songwriting partner on that, and the woman is bugging the mess out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, she calls me up every day. Any word? <laughs> what you doing? What are we going to do? It? Like, I'm farming. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting with horses. I'm wrestling horses. horses. Yeah. I can't leave them by themselves. <laughs> my friend, my friend is... Her name is Lori Kasdan. I've known this woman since the 80s. Fantastic songwriter. Mm -hmm. But when she started working with me on the acoustic guitar, you have to kind of pull back on the songs a little bit, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And I call them speed bumps. If you're not, mm -hmm. if you're not hitting that groove mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With, the, with the rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's how we worked. And we came up with 20 songs that... Been sitting on the shelf since the early 90s. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Pepper, here's just a list of some of the big names that you've done uh, session work with Peter Frampton, Lenny Kravitz, Cher, Neil Diamond, Gladys Knight, Celine Dion, Olivia Newton John, Tina Turner, Mick Jagger, Ray Charles, Julio Iglesias, Bob what? Dylan, uh, Aaron Neville, even Hugh Laurie, uh, and you toured around the world with him, by yes. the way. Wow. What have you learned the most from watching these kind of legends and then becoming one yourself? Um, and is there a session that really sticks out in your memory that's like, Wow, that's that's an icon. When I did Tina Turner mm -hmm. in the early '90s, I was called in, and this was through Robbie Neville. If anybody knows who he is, any relation to Aaron? No, no. no. <laughs> c'est la vie. Okay, c'est la vie, c'est la vie. Okay, oh, that's know. High School Musical. Oh, what? Wait a get minute. Get out. Out. Get We're not there yet. Out. We're not there yet. Get Everybody out. calm down. Shift it back. Okay. <laughs> all We're three of them. <laughs> what else? He what else did all is. three of them. That is a very mm -hmm. small right? world. Mm -hmm. Happy, your mind's going to be blown. He put me on <laughs> Tina's record. Okay. He put me on Mick Jagger doing this, the uh, duet with him on Think, which is a James Brown. <laughs> is that That's six? Robbie. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Right. For some reason, he took a liking to me for, for my some for, some reason. Reason. For, for some reason. For some reason. Even Helen yeah. Keller yeah. like, yourself some music. credit, please. <laughs> I had this voice that where I love to yeah. sing, sing lower, mm. like Michael McDonald mm -hmm. or Peter Gabriel. Mm -hmm. Those inflections mm -hmm. that we sometimes do when we want to. Uh, Sing like someone. Mm -hmm. Dave Matthews is the same way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he says, you need to use that voice. 
So what he started doing, he started moving me around on these sessions, and he put me on Tina's What's Love Got to Do With the Movie. I got to bring in two other baddest singers ever in the city. Jackie Goucher, who's a famous singer here in the LA area, and Lynn Davis, who worked worked hard for a lot of people as far as singing falsetto. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Aww. we did we did the backgrounds for the movie while Tina would go and work with with Michael Peters with the dancers. Oh my goodness. So she was she was basically doing two jobs, yeah. mm-hmm. coming to take care of us with the live band mm-hmm. and then would go out to Walt Disney Studios. Wow. And for him I never said thank you oh. to him. Mm-hmm. Because by the time that that you know when a singer like me, I was just all over the place mm-hmm. singing for everybody. But when she hit me in my diaphragm mm-hmm. and she said, "I want to hear you sing from there. Wow. This woman oh comes gosh. this woman comes in look like Chanel, like a walking model. Mm-hmm. Gorgeous mm-hmm. at the time when I saw her. I couldn't believe it. And she said, I want to hear you sing it from there. And it was like it was an epiphany wow. to me. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Don't be scared. Mm-hmm. Because we spent two glorious days with her. Mm-hmm. And out of that day, I'll never forget, Holly Knight. You probably guys don't know her, but she was before Diane Warren. Okay. Okay. Writer? Writer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to kiss you all over, over again. She wrote that with her partner. Okay. The woman came in way out to here, getting ready to have a baby with a whole new, there she is. Beautiful. Whole new life. And she was so gracious to me. Mm-hmm. And with Tina says, okay, I'm giving y'all two days. You, 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 we did the work on the first day. The second day, let's take pictures. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. She just, she just leveled the playing field I for me. Wow. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. You wow. know, but Robbie Neville, thank you, Robbie, wherever you at. Amazing. <laughs> Well, and that's a good segue. Let's talk about how Reverse, uh, how, how you all met each other. So we met in 2008 um, auditioning for Toronto did a stage production of High School Musical 2. Yes. <laughs> Are you right? Right? not crazy? Right. And we all, we, yes. all got, yes. we all got cast as leads in the play. What? Yeah. And oh. um, we did two different runs of the show. And I was already, I was putting music groups together since I was 14. Yeah. Um, I wrote my first song when I was eight. So <laughs> I, I always knew that I wanted to uh, be in a group and have a certain kind of group, a different kind of group. And so um, after many different versions of this group and that group, once uh, I met everybody here doing High School Musical, oh. um, I kind of handpicked everybody, what? and here we are today, 10 years yes. later. Yeah. I'm a handpicked fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. Thank you. Yeah. And that was kind of your first exposure oh. to like, choreography, right? Uh, mm-hmm. so, so, absolutely. I yeah. mean, I see, I think, I used to think I could dance in my head, but uh, it was not until joining this group and the, the uh, uh, I guess, consistency of rehearsal and performance and just mm-hmm. doing what we do for so long that, uh, you know, and, and under the, the training, really, of fantastic choreographers, most of which for the bulk of time was Justice himself and Khadija as my trainer, like, uh, as, as oh. uh, you know, so I, I have uh, reverse to thank for uh, even bringing just dance period in my life. Incredible. Um, yes. But yes, mm-hmm. uh, definitely, definitely kind of a, a first in high school musical. Yeah. It was all oh. uh, firsts of many. Mm-hmm. Well, at Disney, wow. you kind of self taught yourself singing through <clears throat> Disney songs. Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, as every uh, good gay boy does. As as every, <laughs> I'm like, of course. I always pick the sad songs, though, like Feed the Birds. It's like, <laughs> oh, I love that like, song. Sing something fun. Uh, but it's like, Brr. But it's a pretty. <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame, I was all over that. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. To me, it was, it, was, it was all the Disney songs. It was also my mom's uh, uh, divorcee angst. And so, like, lots of Alanis Morissette kind of threw her tears in the car. Mm. And ABBA, and those were some, you know, oh, just, yeah, 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 but um, wow. that's kind of where where I, I 
picked it up, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, Zach, I want to talk to you about something that is not very much talked about during Pride, because we're all focused on the celebration and the Pride events, the pool parties, the EDM parties. Um, and I want to talk about something that you share on social media and you, mm-hmm. you, you talk very openly about, and that's your journey uh, with sobriety. Mm-hmm. And so I got a few questions from our listeners and from your fans, too. There's, just like the elderly, we should be more a part of Pride, we should make more of an effort to include our sober brothers and sisters mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and non-binary, because I can't imagine how triggering pride must be. Mm. That the fact that it is so party focused, yeah. that if you're not part of the party, then you're not part of pride. Mm-hmm. And oh. obviously that's not true. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you could share a little bit about your sober journey and how you kind of get through pride with some of these triggers. Well, that, that's a very, very, very loaded question with, <laughs> with uh, <laughs> a, 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 deep, a deep history in terms of what brought me um, to essentially the, the, the depths of, of uh, what, you know, the crumbling of my life to, to get sober. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've, I've been sober now from uh, all mind-altering substances essentially about five years. Wow, congratulations. Um, awesome. I'm pretty proud. I'm going to clap at myself. That is amazing. That is very amazing. Thanks. I, I seriously, I am so eternally grateful to uh, just been given the gift of sobriety. I, I, I am a grateful alcoholic. I, I thought at first it was a punishment. I was like, well, the, the fun is over. I can't do the things that I thought, um, you know, I, I would need to do to have fun, um, whether pride or otherwise, you know, but the reality is, is that I was, you know, a daytime drinker. I was, uh, it was impacting everything that I did. Um, I was losing my, my relationships. Uh, and it was the, the kind of the, the final thing which, which uh, made me feel so deeply alone was when the person who I thought would always be there for me, my mm-hmm. mother, when she said, that's it, I'm done, mm-hmm. and turned away and said, I'm not gonna be here for, for, for you anymore. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, and you remember at the time, mm-hmm. I had a spray painted wall that yeah. said freedom on it, mm-hmm. yes. um, that I would stare at every day and just think about how shackled I was by, mm-hmm. by this, you know, uh, uh, this, 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 this obsession and disease and, and, and daily, uh, uh, weight of that uh, which would have eventually killed me very you know shortly thereafter um, the first few prides in my sobriety I mean fast forward a little bit and finding my you know my 12 my step program that I'm, I'm a member of and uh, you know all the love all of the things I mean there was a lot of process <laughs> to get there mm-hmm. um, obviously mm-hmm. with the support system of, of my, my family here um, the prides were incredibly triggering but you know what it wasn't uh, at first it was kind of a, a I could not participate. I just simply, mm-hmm. I had so much anxiety just walking from, you know, in, in our Toronto Pride in, in Canada, my hometown, there's a Church Street, which is actually, by the way, where they filmed a lot of uh, a Queer Spoke. Queer Spoke, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yep. and, and so just walking from point A to point B filled me with anxiety. And then there were all the circuit parties, and then there were all of this, and I just simply said, I, I just can't. And I, in fact, I wrote it off for the rest of my life that I would never be able to do those things. A lot of people wow. do that, and it's, mm-hmm. it's so because it's your pride too yeah. you know and I don't recommend this for for everybody mm-hmm. um, uh, you know if anyone's struggling out there uh, uh, everyone has their own journey and I can only speak from the experience that is my own mm-hmm. um, once I finally uh, you know uh, found a, a degree of, of honesty with with who I was and I guess a freedom from that uh, a reprieve from that mental obsession of I'm here, what does that mean? Oh my God, everyone's drinking. I don't have a drink in my hand. What is that? Uh, it, it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a few years where I'm just very much a lot more confident in, in those areas of my life. I'm able to partake in the, in the things. I'm able to go dancing. Dancing sober <laughs> is one of the most <laughs> spiritual experiences yes, you is. can, I mean, I've ever experienced it because I hadn't experienced it until that point. Mm-hmm. I had never stopped in a pride parade and actually said, what does it mean to be a proud gay man? Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had mm. never thought about that. Wow. I was just busy doing, you know, the things that yeah. that we yeah. do in the parties, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and that's what pride was to me. Pride was mm-hmm. calling my my, you know, at the time, my work at, uh, to say, "Oh, I'm not going to be there next week." Mm-hmm. That, that's what pride was <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because of of the consumption. Mm-hmm. Pride mm-hmm. wasn't about, uh, you know, how do I really like? Where are we in in my personal life and and what it means to be, pr- uh, uh, you know, filled with pride mm-hmm. about my sexual identity and how can I help others? Mm. Others? Yeah. All about me, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So um, 
I guess I guess just to to uh, you know summarize the the pride itself has morphed it's been completely changed I know that I still need my support systems there's there's always uh, at least in Toronto uh, prides because I'm a part of it and I help support the sober spaces in fact mm -hmm. re uh, reverse perform there yeah um, yep. the the I guess the most recent year where they ha were having performances yeah um, and so uh, you know it, there, there are safe spaces. There are. There's always someone that you can talk to. And at the end of the day, is pride doesn't have to be celebrated. Pride is in here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Pride can be celebrated in silence and 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 reflected on at home if that's the safest environment for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's it. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that because yeah. you know that in itself is 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 a coming out as well, and it can be for you know for. I know from like my gay friends when there's somebody sober, it's like, oh God, you know, and then you get all <laughs> nervous. And but a lot of prides don't have a safe space. A lot that's of prides mean. are focusing on the bar because I know because I'm usually there. But it's like that's the focus sponsored by this alcohol. It's like party, yeah. party, party. It's like, well, you know, uh, I I think our prides need to kind of learn from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for sharing because I know this is a difficult time awesome. for for many people. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about what Reverse did uh, through COVID. You know, a lot of people huh. were putting out digital content, but it was like from our living rooms. Or some of us went into this kind of depressive cocoon mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. thankfully a lot of us did come out of, but there was, nobody knew what to do. Mm. Reverse kind of <laughs> was like, <laughs> we don't want to sleep during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Holy damn. Uh, you did a virtual uh, performance. Yes, we did. And it wasn't Ooh. just, and not to put down any content from your living room, but mm -hmm. it was like, you know, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it reverse style. Yeah. Um, and yes. boy, did you do it. <laughs> Where did that kind of idea come across? Because there was going to be no audience. Yeah. I'm sure funding it wasn't the easiest thing during COVID. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, if you can share a little bit about what sparked that kind of idea and what that process, and when you when you all finally filmed it, <laughs> what that felt like. It's like, yeah. okay, I guess we're done performing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you yes. know what? Um, it, 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 the idea to um, create a project that was going to support the release of the album and the video, which we also completed through During COVID. COVID. Yeah. Um, th we kind of look at those things as like our three, like the holy trinity, <laughs> yeah. the album, the video, and the concert. Yes. Yeah. So, so initially um, we did a, um, a performance specifically for Baby Boo the single. Um, and this was through a contact of Zach's through his um, so through his um, sober friends community, yeah. community. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. And um, his name is Jamie Hodgins. The the Shout company. Out to Jamie. Yeah, plug in plug his uh, his com his company. Jamie Hodgins. No, <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Hodgins. No, it's um what uh, the, the virtual v v VCR. Oh yes, yeah, uh, so the these, virtual concert reality. reality. Yeah, yeah. Mm. who he cap he was like, hey, That's a great resource. COVID, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, yeah. hey, there's a pandemic happening. He does a lot of productions himself, and he was like, what do I do now? And he created this incredible space mm -hmm. to then do these virtual shows and virtual yeah. concerts mm -hmm. that are phenomenal. Fantastic. He's absolutely. so fantastic. Yeah. Yes. So we did. Um, uh, we sang a, a little acapella of O Canada just to kind of like let y'all know where we from, <laughs> and then um, we did. A performance of baby boo and when we saw the, the 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 finished product we were like wait a minute okay this is really fierce we need to create a full experience of the album in this same space yeah. so then we just got to work we we <laughs> literally went to the drawing board and said okay choreographer dancers producer photographer mm. behind the scenes we just yeah. li listed out exactly what we needed and then we just got to work a lot of it was um it was it was a challenge to bring together because again it is just the four of us. But once we had our team members on board, our amazing choreographer Leon Blackwood, shout out Leon Blackwood, yeah, Leon Blackwood. Um, right. uh, um, uh, Leia Rifkin who did our um, behind editing, the scenes yeah. and editing of the of the full concert, Ryan mm. McDonald who did our sound, um, our amazing dancers, dancers. Oh my god, oh come my god, on, Martin, Miambi, Armando, Amia, and Lorenz, amazing, the best dancers in the amazing. mother effing world, beach. Okay, so um, <laughs> now we came, we all came together and really. Um, uh, put the vision on paper. We looked at what that was and just created what I personally believe, and I know everybody here in terms of the group, was a masterpiece. It was. And we're super proud mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a little yeah. peek. Oh, 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 my God. God. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I did not expect I that. Neither did Ooh. I. Baby boo. Ooh, oh, yeah, this is the, um, this is the, oh, that's when I went by this. Come on, this.
chill The two step like the OGs Loving overnight till the daylight breaks free Double up with the movie songs I write me about you, baby You can. What I love about Reverse is obviously Woo. you are so cohesive, and I know Stunning. each one of you has a different roles in front of the camera and also behind the mm. camera mm -hmm. in terms of so mm. much. But you still maintain your individuality, mm -hmm. which I think is so important in a group. Mm -hmm. uh, we interviewed Jake Shears from Sister Scissors last okay. week, and he was talking about how they kind of just all lost their individuality, mm -hmm. and as their success oh. rose. Mm -hmm they became this like monster that they couldn't keep up with. Wow. Um, it was so difficult, it was so damaging. Um, and so I do love that you as the creator of the group, mm -hmm. You allow everybody to express themselves, but that each one of you brings such a different oh. energy. Mm -hmm. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That, that was the goal. The goal yeah. was always to, to have a group where there was individuals that the audience can pick somebody out that they can identify or relate mm -hmm. to yes. or gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you have to have everybody shine. Yeah. And so that's why. And I will say, like, Justice is a fantastic, like, creative director. Because we've been together for 10 years, he knows us so well mm. that, like, a lot of times he'll be like, I wrote this song at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's like the whole song is done. And he's like, here's your verse. And then he like reads it or he performs it for me. And I'm like, that is my verse. <laughs> that, that is, is my exactly verse. my yes. verse. Yes. Like, he knows us so well. And mm. he always, like, will do his best to... What's he knows exactly how do I make you shine? Mm -hmm. What's gonna make you sound and look the very best? That's what I'm giving you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's great. Yeah. When I love you as lead rapper, I, I saw mm -hmm. one of your TikToks. You have like a journal and you're just kind of like writing words and like you're doing you're like, this is my daily life. It's oh, like, yeah. you're, you're early, like, <laughs> it's constantly playing in my head. Yes. Music yes. is always in my head, yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, Monroe, I wanna oh. talk about another thing that yes. uh, another theme that happens during Pride. Um, on your social media, you you talk about body positivity, mm -hmm. you show us your curves, which mm -hmm. is so important. What yes. was your experience growing up? I, I know you studied ballet, you studied modern dance, um, and the dance world is so focused on a certain body type. Yes. And so I know what your experience mm -hmm. like that was. And also, again, coming out and having the courage to be like, you know, this is my body and I'm proud of it. I'm gonna show you mm -hmm. it, which, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's difficult. It's hard, it's yeah. hard. No, for real, I mean, um, growing up, I never had anybody to look up to and be like, that looks exactly like me. Mm. I never did. Um, I always had, you know, the Mariah Carey's, the Britney Spears, the Christina Aguilera's, and you know, they were 
one image. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I was like, I have to look like that to be successful. Mm. And um, I've been in the industry for a really long time. And I started off when I was young, of course, and every audition room that I would go to, it's like, mm. they're, you're so talented. You are everything we're looking for, but you just need to lose oh. a little bit of weight. Yeah. Mm. And um, I would, I remember going home and like getting, I'll never forget this, I did a casting for Disney and um, the guy was like, yeah, you know, you're great, fantastic, you're gonna fit this role, but you know, we just need you to lose a couple more pounds so that you can, you know, fit into the clothes that the people want you to fit in and like for the characters and all that stuff. And the roles that I was going for, I was never the lead role because a big girl can't be a, can't be a star. Mm, okay. I was always the funny best friend. Mm. I was always the side character. Yeah. But even then, you had to be a certain type of big girl. Mm -hmm. You were never mm. just a big girl. You had to be the thin big girl. <laughs> like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like the Ethel Mertz. Like, she it, wasn't a big girl, but she was. It really, it messes yes. with your head. Yeah. It messes with your head. So, um, you know, I remember going in the car with my mom, and I'm like, you know, mom, this is what they're saying. She's like, it's okay, you know. You, if you want me to help you, like if this is what you want, mm -hmm. then I'll help you. Mm -hmm. But you also don't have to change who you are mm -hmm. to be that. Um, and I remember when Justice had called me up to be a part of Reverse, I was in the car getting ready to go to a club. <laughs> and he had called me and he was like, hey. And I was like, hey. <laughs> and he was like, so I have to ask you something. I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> He's like, um, would you like to be a part of Reverse? And before he even said, <laughs> Reverse. I was like, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so I remember after like we had our kiki, and I was like, yeah, I'm part of Reverse. Boops, and I closed the phone, and I was like, uh oh. Uh. <laughs> now I'm gonna be in front of everybody. Mm. Like everyone's gonna look at me, mm. and that was my fear. Mm. My fear that everyone was gonna look at me and judge me because I wasn't skinny like Britney Spears. I wasn't mm. skinny like Christina Aguilera. I wasn't skinny like Mariah Carey. I was me, mm. exactly. and I didn't have anybody to to mm. to lean on. And me that's with exactly that. why I selected her. And that's why you are you. Because I'm like I need I need this I need this beauty this voice this magic this charisma mm. to be seen by girls that also look like her. Mm. And so not even just girls; it's everybody around yeah. the world, you know. Yeah. Yes. And <clears throat> the thing growing up is that I looked at these people and I was like, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can sing just like them. Yes. You know, and it would hurt me because I didn't I didn't have anything like that. Right. <sighs> so when I was part of reverse, that was my coming out. Yeah. That was my coming out of who I was. I was mm. like, mm -hmm. I'm going to stand in the front and I'm going to open my mouth <laughs> and I'm going to sing wow. and everyone's going to watch me <laughs> exactly. and everyone's going to listen, yeah. you know, and it, it, there was one part in High School Musical where and this is another triggering thing of, you know, being a plus size, you know, thick woman in the industry is I was only good enough in High School Musical for part of it um, was my voice. Mm. Uh, no tea, no shade, but I was Gabriella's voice for the first run. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when Gabriella was with Troy, I was like, na, 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 yeah. In the back. In the back. Right. You are the music in me. In the back. And she's like. <laughs> <laughs> and no one and saw wow. this beautiful face. No, and the thing is, a another thing is, we were outside and we're signing autographs with everybody and mm. all the girls and all the little boys and You parents. have such a beautiful voice. Oh beautiful gosh, voice. We love you and so she much. said, thank, thank you. you. Mm. No, she didn't. She <laughs> didn't. <laughs> and I was there. I'm going to call her right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the back just like. Mm -hmm. But that was you. That was me. Yeah. So my whole life, I'd, I kind of always been behind the scenes of like, mm -hmm. that's the girl with the voice. But we're going to mm -hmm. we're going to keep her in the back because, you know, she's not that that skinny girl that we need. The <laughs> but look. The, look. the look. And you know what? I'm sorry, but I am the look. Yes, the you look. are. That's yes, right. you are. Tell I them. am the look. And, and the talent. The, the moment. Them. And not to mention oh, every yes. artist you mentioned from <laughs> Britney Spears, Christina and Mariah Carey have all talked about their severe yeah. body issues that play yes. with their psyche yeah. that yeah. have had some part with their mental health. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's still a struggle for me today. I'm not like, I'm perfect. No. But like, I, I have my moments where like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I ate so much the other day. And it's this obsession that mm -hmm. we as humans have mm -hmm. with perfection 
that is so mentally draining. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So mentally draining. If I can just add, fe- like, fe- not females and males. Uh, yeah, yeah that's know, what I mean. Everybody. Yeah. You know, I, I, I like, I, yeah, especially during Pride is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Now shirts are coming off. Mm-hmm. Now all the floats have all the hot guys in their speedos. It's mm-hmm. like okay, or it's the uh, it's the complete other side, which is the bear community, mm-hmm. which is a community in itself. But nobody talks to each other, and it's like, well, what if you're not that extreme and you're not that extreme? Yeah. Where, right. where are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to talk to all of you of. You know, body positivity is such like a buzzword. Like Disney now is all about inclusivity mm. and all their casting. It's like, well, where were you when this audition right? was happening? Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, do we think it's just a buzzword? And I'll tell you, um, I've already had some pride gigs this last weekend. Uh, we did Desertopia in Palm Springs, Come and on. it was a pool party. Guess what? Body positivity was not the main of course, <laughs> priority no, of course for not. anybody. Of course. You know, and yeah. I'm like, I'm funny on the mic, but then go mix and mingle. It's like, mm. yeah, yeah. So I want to talk from your perspective mm. and. Um, you both as gay men mm-hmm. obviously take very mm-hmm. good care of your body. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what is the perspective of, do you think body positivity is truly happening or it's a buzzword that's in the media, but it's is it happening on the ground level? Well, mm. uh, like, let me, from my personal experience, when I'm posting a picture, because um, uh, I've undergone a tr- like a transformation, that Huge. Which, yes. which has aligned with my sobriety. Um, it's been a big part of that. And I was, a, I, I suffered from bulimia for many years of my, uh, you know, high school and university years. So the the pressure of, of, of the body image that mm. I thought I needed, mm. it, it had its impact on, 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 on my life. Um, but uh, to, to the, the, the point of the story that I'm sharing is, is that when I post a picture or want to post a picture today on Instagram, for instance, that is, let's say uh, where I'm, I might be shirtless, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes hesitant because it's like, mm-hmm. how will that be perceived in terms of like body positivity or, mm-hmm. or is, is he, is he um, uh, embracing and appreciating kind of one form of image, which is my, like my own and I want to share it. But uh, what I would say is that it, it, it comes from, uh, Today when I go to the gym and I work on my, my, my fitness, I have one rule and, I, and I, have, I have worked with trainers and things like that, but today my program is so long as I'm there and I'm having a good, a good time and I am getting what I need from it and it's the meditation that I seek, that's all that I need to be mm, there. Mm. And so the byproduct benefits that come with it you know, are, are, are simply there, but I, body positivity in just general, it is a. I'm. I. I also suffer from attention deficit disorder, and I am uh, going on a tangent. And I you lost, lost my point. train. Of that thoughts. happens. Well, I was gonna say just really quickly, <laughs> uh, just to, <laughs> the, the in terms of the buzzword thing. Um, um, I. I have a love hate relationship with social media, but the one thing that I do love about it is that it is the people. So I think because it's the people that that gate has been open now, where there are people of all different walks of life who are essentially running ish mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it is a buzzword in the media. It might be, yeah. but when you go to the real world, when you go on social media, the TikToks, this or that, that is always going to be because yeah. those people exist in those spaces. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's that's, that's what it. I was going to say uh, to your question. Mm. I think everything. It's like exactly what you said earlier. June, as soon as June first hits, every corporation, every brand is like pride and love is love, and like July first, they'll forget about it. Mm-hmm. February first, it's all Black Lives Matter, and we're all about, and then they forget about it. But there are people out there who are who have been doing the work on a grassroots level. So with body positivity in the body positivity community, there are people who are actively out there, and they have been for decades mm-hmm. doing this mm-hmm. work and educating people, and like. For me, I'm I'm curating my social media to those people because the, all the buzzwords will always be flying around. But you have to find the people who are out there like they know what they're talking about. They have the knowledge. They have the science. They have the resources. And those are the people that are going to lead the change. Mm-hmm. So we need to give our attention and our energy mm-hmm. to the grassroots. That's where change will start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and Monroe, also, when you say, you know, you use hashtags like body positive plus size model and then the focus is totally on your body um Mm -hmm. and that gets tiring too just like when you're a gay singer or you're a gay group Mm -hmm. or you're a gay mc it's like wait a minute (laughs) i'm so much more yeah Yeah. Yeah. so so it's a double-edged sword that hollywood is now talking about oh you know we've hired this model or or this Mm -hmm. performance like okay let's get past it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. so it really is you know do we want representation but then that's all the articles focus on. (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah 
It is like a double edged sword, isn't it? It's weird because it's and just then you're hyper aware. Like you yeah. said, it's like I want to be on camera. Everything's gonna be like body positive. And I'm like, let's see how you know. It's yeah. Like, yeah. 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 It's, yeah. I think honestly, I think that's why that's one of the things that I love the most about reverse. People tell us all the time, like if you guys really corner this this niche of being like an LGBTQ plus group, then you can really focus on that and talk about that all the time. But like, but we are artists first and foremost, exactly. and we will yeah. always mm -hmm. make that decision to put our artistry first before anything else. And we always talk on our reaction series about how when I love your reaction series, by the way. Thank I'm, you. Like, it's like we get to hang out with you for real. Yeah. Um, that's what it's yeah. supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. <laughs> yeah, but we talk about how like, um, when you're offering representation, but you're not pigeonholing people, you get to see the broad spectrum. Yeah. Uh -huh. The more we can see plus size people also being funny and like, you know what I mean? All these different things. We can see a gay man who is also very talented and a great dancer and a great songwriter and a great, you can see the full spec spectrum of who someone is. Then you kind of start to break down those labels. Mm -hmm. And I like, mm -hmm. we are always just going to be reverse before we are any of those things. Yeah. Mm. That's actually a really good point. Cause when you start watching your video, you're so entranced. All of these labels that have been thrown mm. on reverse are out because you're mm. just you're just in it and you're not <laughs> thinking right. about each little label it's gone mm. it's gone <laughs> y'all bring the soul oh, <laughs> y'all bringing soul well coming you know from, you, from, you, coming that from you, you that is a I'm great serious. compliment I, I'm going to Apple Music as soon as I leave from here come on thank yes. yes. you <laughs> Khadija we got this uh, from Ooh. one of your fans uh, wanted to ask you about your TikTok uh, is TikTok dancing real dancing or is it giving dance a bad name Oh, oh, that oh. We have a lot of hot topics. topics. I can talk about this all day. I really feel like... We have like two minutes. I can talk about this for <laughs> one minute exactly. I think TikTok is so underrated. I okay. it is, It's a different art form. In the same way that like... Whatever, I don't know. Movies came out, and then people who were doing like radio shows were like, what is this? Or you podcast. know what I mean? Or <laughs> podcasts. And people are like... It's so underrated. It's a very different art form, but it is something. It not everybody could be a TikTok dancer. Yeah. The dance styles are different, but there's something that's very unique about it, and you have to have a certain quality to be able to engage with people and mm. catch them in 15 seconds or less or mm -hmm. whatever. Like it, I think TikTok dancers need a lot more credit than they get. Mm. There is this battle. We've had people that are professional dancers mm. that have been on reality TV and they're mm. like, TikTok dancing is following steps. It's not dancing. Mm. And it's also having a lot of TikTok dancers show up to auditions. Yeah. And oh they're like gosh. not prepared for the audition. Oh, I mean, poor thing. So I'm like, well then so why don't you make TikToks about the audition yes. process? Well, you know yeah. what though? If we could apply the same kind of uh, thoughts of, of evolution and and just openness and uh, open-mindedness and mm. such, I, I think I think there's some takeaways that, you know, we've, we've talked about just in our, in our chats today that we can apply to that too. I mean, everything mm -hmm. is, is always ever changing and there's space for everybody. And there's there's no you know per singular right or wrong way to do things as mm. Khadija mentioned. It's just it's just a way. Yeah. yeah, don't send a TikTok dancer to an advanced hip hop class. Not a good look. But let them have their space mm. and let them shine mm. there. And plus, some kid in the Midwest is sliding up on maybe a queer artist who's doing a TikTok, and they're able to see themselves represented. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter if you, you have. Okay, okay. <laughs> Still haven't gotten on TikTok. I'm fighting it. No. Yeah. You gotta get on it. I just it. got what there. Would I, do? I like, just. <laughs> I'm. I'm. I got there, but I'm also barely hanging on. <laughs> yeah. That's the last. I've been left behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. TikTok is alright. Um, Tony, do we have time for one more hot topic? One more. One okay. More. Um, I really want to know your perspective and your perspective, Pepper, as well. Um, you all coming from a different nation, mm -hmm. which is not so far, but it is so far in my mind in terms of <laughs> how advanced everybody yes, is up right. there. That's right. Um, during COVID, here mm. in LA, across the nation, we had BLM protests. Mm -hmm. It was extremely divisive, even in terms of our own LGBTQ community, where we suddenly found out people that were our best friends mm -hmm. were not so inclusive as we professed pro profess to be. Uh, per perpetuated? Per no. More. Profess to be. Profess. Profess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You're the, you're the word nerd. I know. Yeah, oh, like, mm. I was like, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to talk about what your experience is in Canada hmm. in terms of any type of phobia hmm. um, and also levels of racism. Mm -hmm. And also, Pepper, I want you to talk about mm -hmm. you've been in the industry for a while yes. as a black woman. And we know... Um, you know, hearing about somebody singing for somebody else is not new, right. especially for a black woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to know about this, and I think this is an important 
topic to end on yeah. um, to make us motivated for get through Pride, but for the next year. So that yes. next Pride, we're having a different conversation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so come on, Canadians. Tell me what's up up north. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is this, a this big is tough. That's a big this one. Is a it one. is. Yeah. And I think everybody has a, an idea that Canada is much more inclusive and much more open-minded and assumption. much more accepting. Mm-hmm. Utopia. Which, yeah. Yeah. in a lot of ways, we are very grateful to live in Canada because there are a lot of things that, like, coming here, many of my friends and family were like, be careful. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to the States. Like, just but please it's a very be real ca- thing. It's real. Yeah. 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 But mm. there is also very much a lot of bigotry in Canada. Mm-hmm. But it's just quieter. It's just, like behind closed doors behind the curtain at a public thing we're all honoring everybody but then when it comes to giving opportunities or to acknowledgement or to people facing actual discrimination and then it just gets brushed aside like Mm. that happens every day in canada that's how the u.s was six years ago Mm -hmm. everything was kind of quiet and we saw what happened yes donald trump (laughs) yeah i said it sorry (laughs) yeah well, people think uh, Canada. Just to just to comment on that, we mm-hmm. often hear that. We, as a Canadian, I often hear the comment, "Well, Canadians are so polite or yes. so so kind," yeah. mm-hmm. and and uh, that that just speaks speaks to that because it, it's it's uh, what I appreciate about Americans. And I actually learned this going to like twelve step meetings here in in the states. In all of the oh, times I've been that here, must be an interesting. Y'all are loud. Y'all are like like just talking over each but other. We have donuts at our meetings. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it was, uh, you know, just just there, there's elements of that that are, uh, you know, things are are, are brought forward or expressed More upfront. upfront. Mm-hmm. Um, there's less of a of a smile here and kind of a, a mm. thought there that's not shared, and that so that's where the kind of Canadian politeness maybe does us a dis a, just as a disservice. It's disservice. Kind of scary to not, you know, they say the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Yes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's yes, scary. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's really all I all I wanted to share. But you're you're absolutely right in terms of uh, the the experience of that what i what i what comes to mind is the imagery of of harry potter i know it's like so far far out there but but the death eaters That's kind of hot topic. the death the eaters death eaters, death yes. eaters kind of taking off their masks yes. and uh, exposing mm. their true their true selves because through all of that politeness and kindness that we might have mm-hmm. in canada you know there was a, a lot that surprised me and and i just had not because it was never spoken and there was mm-hmm. and sometimes you know we just proceed with our lives mm. and so uh, uh, that's kind of one of the things that you know the the politeness masked quite literally. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll ju- I'll just give you a really short example. Um, walking into any business for me, I am always watched by security. Mm-hmm. It does not matter what business I go into. Mm-hmm. I will always feel a body or and I, and there there's somebody following me. Mm-hmm. And I always have to fight myself from saying you don't actually. I'm not stealing anything, <laughs> but it, it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's just an example of the fact that it does exist in Canada mm-hmm. and, um, and, and, in even in the entertainment industry, which mm-hmm. is where I've, you know, lived my whole life. Um, it is so rampant. Oh, it is yeah. so rampant. Entertainment industry is not a safe space. Oh no, not, not at all. Well, not, a, but colorism also is another thing. Like mm-hmm. it's not just racism, but black people and, sh- and skin shades and that's right. it's, 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 that is a, n- a whole other bag of bull crap that, <laughs> um, could be a, a whole episode in itself, <laughs> exactly. but I'll leave it there. Yeah. True. Well, like here True. in LA, we think that we're such like you know a melting pot mm-hmm. used to be the term for us, which mm-hmm. is probably not the best term. It's like we don't want to melt; we want to be uh, part mm-hmm. of something like reverse, but mm-hmm. still maintain your yes. individuality. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, I think representation is 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 totally different. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And this was a very dangerous time for mm-hmm. many yeah. in your community, and I think a lot of gay men in West Hollywood didn't know how to support mm. the black community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some of us didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember when um, the drag queens mm-hmm. in the 80s mm. were being refused to go into gay clubs. Mm-hmm. 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 They didn't want them. Mm-hmm. And that was a shock to me mm. because I felt that it was a whole it should have been a whole community united together yes. mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. in all the different categories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It you know, should be. And then when Obama <clears throat> came in, mm-hmm. I had many fury battles with Bobby Caldwell mm-hmm. and his yeah. group. Mm-hmm. To this day, now they're jumping on the trans mm-hmm. 
uh, athletes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that a, a young man can trans mm -hmm. into a female, mm -hmm. but they think that that takes away from a female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. that is a very hot topic. Mm -hmm. and I'm yes, not sure how I feel about that, but it's a conversation that we should come to the table and actually have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that we can learn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we can move on. But mm -hmm. there's so many people that don't want to even have yeah. the conversation. It's not even part of their mindset. Mm -hmm. When they yeah. see that picture, Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's actually a very good point. Even in West Hollywood, drag queens would have their own bars to hang out at, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't be at the Abbey or the Mickey's. Mm -hmm. And now we know that, like every club has four drag shows yes. a day. Yeah. We're like, yeah. can we get it? <laughs> Playing RuPaul on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Yeah. But like yes. RuPaul and Drag Race being across the world mm -hmm. now at this point. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? They're season one. Who would have thought that it would yes. be a mainstream phenomenon? Mm -hmm. We were talking about that the other day, too. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Tu Wong Fu, and we were yes. like, how yes. drag Tu has Fu. changed. Yes. Yeah. But how scary for those actors. Wesley Snipes, Patrick Swayze, right? John yes. Leguizamo. Yes. Yes. It wasn't what it was now. Oh, yeah. my yeah. God. You know, that was Amazing. probably... They deserve their flowers yes. for yes. Real. going yes, there at that time. And they brought exactly. it in. Again, they were so individual. Mm -hmm. John Leguizamo, I would have dated him in uh, two yeah. seconds. I loved him in that movie. Oh, God. But how comfortable were they telling these stories? You know, now we're so angry like if a straight man tells our gay man story but the story's being told mm -hmm. right. and mm -hmm. with Ki Wong Fu the story was yeah. told mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. you know mm -hmm. Priscilla Queen of the Desert the story was told mm -hmm. yeah. yes we can involve and we could want more representation mm -hmm. but let's at least get the story out there yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Ch exactly. chip at the wall yeah. in whatever yeah. way yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Monroe your experience in in Canada <sighs> well you know what my experience is going to be much different from from everyone else's um, because I am a white woman, right? And it's actually a conversation that we had had at the dinner table um, last week or yeah, so yeah. Um, about how my experience is different from your experience and your experience and your experience um, because being a white woman, everything is supposed to be much easier for you, right? You're just going to get the green light. Oh, you are blonde hair, blue eyed, mm. white skin, you are the all American dream, yep. right? Mm. And I, I was just born this way. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't understand what that meant. You know what I mean? I'm living my life because I was just born this way, just like you're also born black and you're a black woman. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's, mm. everyone is born the way that they are and people have created this divisiveness yes. within each other. And I always go back to the representation of children. Mm. You know, when you put children in a room, no matter what race you are, mm. they, don't, they don't see that. They see, oh, you're my friend, you're another yeah. person. You know, but as you're growing up, you're like, oh, but now my friend is being, you mm -hmm. know, being yelled at, or my friend is being turned away. My friend's not invited here, you know? Right. And you're, horizons your your mindset starts to open up and you start to see okay this is not okay <clears throat> and um in canada it is very much a more quieter thing um and because i'm part of reverse i see things from different perspectives i don't mm. see things just from my own eyes mm -hmm. i see things from my brothers and my sister's eyes too mm -hmm. yeah. and it's also a learning thing that you that you that you learn growing up and and also being a part of this group i see things differently because i have my brothers and sisters here you know who walk a different path than i do mm -hmm. you know and then they also have insight from what i see as well and how maybe i don't understand mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. or maybe they don't understand something so there's this constant communication that yeah. we have within the group which i think is so important mm -hmm. and when we say that we represent the underrepresented <laughs> Girl, we do yeah. <laughs> right. because there is a commu there is there is everything that you can think of. There's something that we represent within that group, mm -hmm. and we're able to have a voice mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm my my experience is, is that I am grateful that I'm able to learn, mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. able to learn, mm -hmm. that I'm able to grow, and yeah, that I'm able to learn and able to grow mm -hmm. because. <laughs> we are constantly evolving and if we're gonna if you're gonna live your life with one mindset 
you're not really living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not living in this world. You're living in your world, and your world is completely different from the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. open your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and mm -hmm. what Reverse has proven is your family can be your friends, can yeah. be the team that you align yourself with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You guys have been through ups and downs. No, have. You've been through <laughs> challenges in life, wow. many Trials challenges. And, um, and here you are, mm -hmm. and you have a safe space. You where have you no been all my go. life? You, you oh. Oh. We're here now. We're here now. And Pepper, you don't dive in that goddamn pool. <laughs> <laughs> where have y'all been all oh. my life? We're here now, boo. So much. Yes. Oh my god. Collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are we gonna go to a ranch and disappear and never come back? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and just fall and oh, like no. we done moved past that, baby. We're up the hill now. Up the hill. We're going up the hill. We're that we shining do, beacon on the hill. We should do a dinner night. At the ranch, we put all put our phones away. We just hang out and talk. I would love that. Oh, oh my gosh, gosh. that'll be so much that fun. Is yeah. Come back. Yes. Yeah. You, my stroke. You, boo, not the farm. <laughs> up the hill. Up, up the hill. hill. Yes. Yeah. Tony. You know, us and West Hollywood, we're like, we're Pasadena? It. Do I need a passport? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're relocating here. I mean, uh, we're moving here uh, is part of, uh, we're not just here for a month and then it's 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 goodbye so long and, you know, see you maybe next year we'll or something. Like that. Yes. We'll be back we'll be frequently. Back. I mean, this is this is where our business happens. You and have so, to, because y'all talented. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank There's you. no way yeah. in hell that you need to mm. keep that on the shelf up on that border. Yeah. We are global <laughs> citizens, and we are bringing our fan, message to the awesome. world. Yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah. yeah. All right, well, we have to wrap up. As sad as that is, um, if we can just go down the line, tell people where you want them to find you and follow you, Khadija. Uh, you can find Reverse Collectively at Reverse Live, R-I-V-E-R-S-E, live on all social media platforms. <laughs> And when you go there, then you can find each of our individual accounts as well. So follow us. I do a lot of dancing. This one's always shirtless, and he looks great. You guys can follow. <laughs> yes. Those pants from that virtual should have their OnlyFans. Come awesome. on. <laughs> okay. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Um, je m'appelle. No, well, oh. uh, sorry, no. Give your in individual too. Okay, so then my individual and your one TikTok, is. You gotta, gotta, you gotta check it out. TikTok. Yes, my individual one is Khadija dot reverse. So K H A D I J A dot reverse R I V E R S E. Yes, yes, yes. mama. Um, my name is Justice. You can follow me at Reverse Live, R I V E R S E Live, and that's the case across all social media. And personally, you can follow me on my personal Instagram account at dz.reverse, D I Z Z Y dot reverse, R I V E R S E. Bam! What was the transition from? Yeah. It was my British. Oh, oh the name. The name. <laughs> oh, okay, so let me condense because I know, I know we have to wrap. Wow. I know we have to wrap it up. So um, Diz um, was a nickname that I was given as a child, but what it morphed into um, was the hard shell that I thought I had to become as a hyper-masculine man to make it in this industry. Diz mm -hmm. took on that form. And um, Justice was uh, me breaking that down and co becoming more of myself. Mm -hmm. And the, the version of me now that that taps into my divine feminine and my beautiful masculine, that's mm. what justice is now today. Yes. Oh, nice. And I'm an activist, so fight for justice exactly. for all beautiful humans on this planet. Period. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pepper. Darling, you can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Girl. Yeah. It was the way she said it. I'm still. I, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> going on Facebook just I for have, you. I have, <laughs> you know what, darling? I have, now I want to learn TikTok. Come on, yes. TikTok. Come on. Yes. TikTok. You, yes. I will, I will. Should you will sure. blow up on yeah. TikTok. I'm serious, y'all. But Facebook, on Twitter, I, I'm a, I'm an activist on Twitter. Yes. Love yes. it. I have Love a number it. of handles, and you, you'll have to put them together. <laughs> you can't like say, ex. you can't say too much. It's true. <laughs> Politically, because mm -hmm. people, you know, in mm -hmm. our community, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have been blacklisted. Wow. Mm -hmm. And not just because mm -hmm. of the skin. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to hit potholes in your mm -hmm. career to where you can't go yeah. into certain areas. But most of it is Pepper Mache 53. Pepper Mache 53. <laughs> That's the year of my birth, y'all. Come on. Yes. I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. 69 this year, y'all. Oh, wow. wow. Boom. That's oh a God. good number. <laughs> Damn. That's a good number. That is a good well, And since you guys have been Airbnb in West Hollywood, you see there's 
24 year olds with so much Botox, whatever. Oh, like, yeah. You're on your last leg, girl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Monroe, before you share, can you do? Yeah. Can you just do the, <gasps> the, the doll, doll eye? Oh my god! You have to. Everybody's obsessed to look with in the it. camera. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is my doll eye. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> You're so cute. It's the it's the like Twilight I can Zone. continue to have a conversation and blink the other eye, but this one still remains the same. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah. 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 But Thank this you. one still remains the same. And this one still remains the same. <laughs> <laughs> Obsessed. Obsessed. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so now you can follow me at Reverse Live. R I V E R S E Live. That's again with reverse. And then on my personal account, you can follow me at Monroe XX Reverse. That's M O N R O E X X Reverse R I V E R S E. Well done. Yeah, that is Thank done. You. Thank you. Q R S T. Somebody messaged me like, "Does he have an OnlyFans?" No, I was gonna say not three X's. That's a that's a different. Oh my gosh, what does a double X mean then? It's just like kiss 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 kiss. All right. X X. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everyone can follow me as well. I, I love the uh, the little repetition plug here uh, at Reverse Live because it's the truth. Uh, R I V E R S E Live L I V E. I'll spell it once more for you. And personally, I can be followed at Zach Reverse. Uh, that's Z A K R I V E R S E. And I learned that Canadians say Z as opposed to Z because everywhere I go, I spell my name. I say Z A K, and then the like, barista what? or whatever he, the, he or she or, or they that you know they they spell Z E E D A K. I'm like I'm not Zadak. 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 That's Zadak. just how I say the letter. It's Liza Zadak. with a Z, not Liza with a. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, uh, I what a great kickoff for Pride. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. So Happy in Pride. keeping with Pride, here at the network, uh, we are spinning off on a network for and by the community. If you're a podcaster want to be a podcaster, reach out to lgbtqigo.com for all the information because um, we'll make it work for you. Uh, that's all, folks. It's always a grab bag of fun here every week on The Rocks. Big thank you to our fabulous guest, uh, our engineer, Tony Sweet. Also Yay. Come on, Tony. Tony. Ah. Our social media clip editor, Alexis Mendez. Uh, we're celebrating Pride all month. Next week, we're talking Star Trek in Pride with Star Ooh. Trek Discovery's Marie Chifo. Uh, we have members of the cast of the upcoming world premiere of Interstate at East West Players, an Asian-American pop rock poetry musical focused on the queer community. And we're going to be talking about the Asian community, another wow. represented community during Pride. Mm -hmm. um, and yes. then to sex it up, we have 2020 Sexiest Guy on TikTok by People Magazine, also Broadway and TV actor, Ian Paget is coming in to talk about mental health awareness during Pride. Okay. Come on, Ian. Also, I found out today, I can't name them, we have some Bravo Liberty surprises. You're going to pee your pants. <laughs> Almost like one of them peed our seat here when she was here first. <coughs> oh, Was it me? <laughs> oh. Wow. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the story. Anyway, it's all here for Pride. Uh, please like, share, subscribe so we can continue to bring this fabulous programming coming your way. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay sexy. I usually end with stay tipsy. Stay tipsy or party and be sober. Yes! Yes, yes Chuck! <laughs> Instagram at On The Rocks On Air. Find everything On The Rocks for free at ontherocksradioshow.com. Subscribe, like, review, and share. Until next week, stay safe.